Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the very first JSB anime cast. I'm your host, Asher, and today I'm joined by, who will be our consistent regulars, to my left, we have Jenny, aka Tiger Lily. Say hello. And then Hi. Uh, we have Zen, who some of you, if you follow the JSB Games cast, uh, might know, to my bottom right. Uh, hello. How, how, how are we doing today? How are we, are, are we doing all right? Are we doing okay? Doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's been a good Sunday, you would say. I've I've been I've been antsy, I would say, like the mm. past couple days. Um, this is a uh, I don't know. It feel, it feel <laughs> this is weird to say, but it feel uh, JSB feels like a storied brand, I guess. Mm. Uh, okay. You know, yeah. you you goons have been been at it for a long time, and then uh, I I just happen to be like. We ha we have to do an anime podcast. Let's let's freaking go. Uh, you said let's go, and I'm like, wow, he he's tackling this on with a lot more like confidence than I expected. So now I'm sweating. <laughs> and then uh, I, I don't know. Anytime someone brings me an idea, I'm just like, let let's do it. Sign off, you know. <laughs> and just like having the and, and and then like eventually like approaching Jenny. I think it was like during one of your uh, cooking streams. Uh, that I was like, I think we, I, I don't remember what anime we were talking about. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was. Do you remember? Yeah, I do. So you actually came over the day before my birthday and we were playing. That's right. Dinner. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you were telling, I think Paul actually brought it up, um, that you were going to do this and then you started talking about it. And then I was like, oh, I tried to do that, start an anime review channel mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, and the first one I did was Your Line April, and I was trying to do it from a literary approach because that's what my, my first degree was in. Mm -hmm. And um, But then I also nerded out about the classical music because I grew up playing piano, and that's all I listened to was classical music. So I felt like I understood everything those characters go through and just like that emotion that they did such a good job of portraying through mm -hmm. an anime um, music. And that's the thing that anime can do is they turn everything into an anime. So like yep. food, cooking became an anime, and you had villains yes. in cooking somehow. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All, all, all the these things that like I, I think at least for me I was telling Rob I don't remember exactly what we were talking about but when uh, I, I was telling Rob about that moment when I was talking to you about your light in April and I was and, and then just immediately after I was like would you be interested in this you know like uh, uh, because 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 of that moment it was absolutely because of like that oh man I I, I don't think about it that way even though like I am historically like musically inclined but like to kind of approach it with your like literary background hearing the stuff you were talking about was interesting and so to me I I feel like with a lot of other people I might know what they're gonna say uh with you this is like a fun way to get to know you better because even though we've hung out like a good amount and we're we're now playing like music together and doing other things like that. Um, we haven't really talked anime. Uh -uh. And this is like gonna be a rip roaring good time to like kind of get your like POV on that sort of thing. Um, so, what I'm hearing is in the future, we need to do a, a book club style watch of Your Lie in April so I can get this <laughs> wonderful breakdown. Uh, <laughs> I watched it uh, for the second time last year. I introduced it to a friend of mine, uh, and, and I died again watching it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I could gladly die for a third time. <laughs> you know? uh, I'm down for that. It's... Well, that's what we do with anime. We, we ready ourselves to die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And th it's particularly fun to get into an anime podcast at this time, because uh, I think I talked about this before with a couple of other goons. They're... Because we're, 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 we're all three a little bit more on the, I'm not going to call us old, but a little bit more on the, like... I'm old. <laughs> you know, we, we, we as anime fans, I would say, learned to walk so that 
modern day anime fans or could run right we we crawled before <laughs> they could like run and and so we we had a little bit more to deal with the like i guess kind of more cringe stuff uh the con mm-hmm. stuff the amvs you know all that jazz that's still going on uh but when we were watching anime um it was a lot harder to get a hold of right that was like limewire era um God. Yeah. So many thrown away laptops with viruses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I had uh, to fix my aunt's computer so many times. Mm-hmm. So many times. Like, I, I would destroy it because I'm trying to download anime. Uh, mm-hmm. And then it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I know she gets up for work at like 6. And I'm like, all right, I got like four hours to figure this out. And I'm only like 10 years old. I'm like, I got to do this. <laughs> yeah, but you got to do it she because never know. We, we, had, we had to get like our fix and stuff like that. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. um,. It, like I said, it's great now because there is too much anime now. There, there, there's, there's so much to consume uh, about anything. Like you said, there's stuff about music. There's stuff about cooking. Um, there's relaxing anime. There's anime that like will put your emotions in the dirt. There's uh, I, I don't I don't know. You pick you pick your poison, and there's honestly like it can be at the point where you can gauge a person and you can introduce them to anime because I I do believe there is like an anime for everyone. Um, like even some of my parents have like enjoyed some of the anime I just throw on, you know? Um, yeah. And with that being the case, I do want to get onto the subject of like, the, the first thing that I was thinking about for this first episode was uh, kind of like our history with anime. So we'll we'll start with Jenny. Like, what are, what are your earliest memories of anime? Like, what was the first? Do you remember the first anime you watched, oh, or yeah. what were the first animes that really like just stuck with you? Um, I think the big thing that you just brought up is how hard it was to get a hold of. Mm-hmm. So what had happened was fourth grade. I had two friends, uh, both named Josh, that I played soccer with, but they were always in class getting in trouble from the teachers by drawing uh, Dragon Ball Z. Okay. They, were, <laughs> they weren't taking notes. They were obviously not paying attention. They're just drawing characters from DBZ. Yeah. And they talked about it with this enthusiasm that was just infectious. And so um, the first opportunity I got, because I didn't have cable when I was growing up, um, mm-hmm. I, was out, I was staying at a hotel with my dad because we were driving on our way to Jacksonville um, for Christmas, which we did every year. And the uh, he's, he fell asleep in the hotel room and I stayed up. And I happened to flip to a channel and I was like, oh my gosh, I think this is DBZ. Oh, I started watching it. I was just like, okay, so this is what they're talking about. Oh my gosh, I feel like I relate to my friends now. I come back to them super excited. And uh, I'm like, yeah, it's Goku. He's got a monkey tail. And they're like, Jenny, that's Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> and I just felt like I was caught all over again wearing like Bobo Adidas's. You know? <laughs> not, no, not, not the, the Bobo. Bobo. The, yeah, not the, the Bobo Adidas. <laughs> The, the four stripes, oh not God. three, you know? And that's how I felt all over again. So I was like, all right, I need to, I want to learn more. So um, so then the next thing that kind of was like my fill-in because I didn't have access to a lot of the shows until they came on to like accessible channels like uh, CW, start showing some animes and stuff. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, and Pokemon were huge at the time. So those were all like kind of big shows. Um, and those ones, I mean, I I, watch, I read Shonen Jump to kind of keep up with what else the kids were watching and listening to, um, to the point where when I got older and was able to get those things legally and cleanly, uh, <laughs> I actually had context of what they were about. Mm-hmm. I like how she just looks dead behind me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we love we love Mabel. I cannot wait to commission anime art of Mabel. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be so good. She's it's... so derpy looking. It's great. <laughs> it's gonna be so so cute. Well, I love I love hearing that. I feel like that's like that that that's so par for the course. <laughs> I I remember that yeah. too, and I remember hearing stories of like people scrolling through the different channels at night, specifically maybe when you're trying to like you know not let your parents know or not let anybody know that you're like sneaking around you know staying up late because we never want to go to bed still awake yeah Yeah. and um Mm -hmm. i don't know running into that and that's really cool that like you're able to communicate with those friends uh 
I guess like on a deeper level after that, do you still, do you still talk to these? Uh, I'm, I'm an interesting case of a person because I've moved around my entire life. So I've, I yeah. haven't had, I have this weird expectation that a lot of people have been friends since they were like three. And so right. like, do you still like talk to these people? No, out of curiosity. Um, I moved around too. <laughs> oh, okay. Weird. Not for the same reasons. Cause you're, you're military, right? Your yes. family. Yeah, so I, my dad just, my family just moved all over because my siblings, they were a lot older than me, so they left home and then they moved and then the fam my parents were like, we got to move with them. <laughs> so okay. um, that's why. So yeah, everyone that I was friends with in elementary school, I, yeah, I think it's weird that, you know, I met Paul and he's still friends with his friends from high school. I'm like, what? That's weird. Uh, <laughs> it <laughs> is so bizarre. It, it, it is very bizarre to me. I think I have one friend still from high school. I think that's it. And... I didn't think I was going to keep any friends after high school because of like that military traveling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's sick to hear. We we all need to get through uh, those years by by talking to people, and so it's nice that you could relate to that stuff. Um, what about what about you, uh, Lord Emperor Zen? <laughs> Not the Lord Emperor. Uh, so it's the, I started watching. Um, Pretty much around like the same age right it was like that fourth fifth grade uh time for me uh but it wasn't so much to to relate with friends necessarily it, it was really funny because it's like i didn't really have an idea of like what anime was like everything that came on tv was just cartoons to me i didn't realize that like oh this came from japan and the anime was like a very specific genre right um but like i did start watching like uh dragon ball z was the first one right mm -hmm. that me and my cousin like went ham over to the point that we would like fight each other because it's dragon ball right and we have busted many a holes in in various rooms of <laughs> my mom's house at the time mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. just throwing each other into into, into the walls yeah. uh but uh from from there it's like anything else that would come on so like sailor moon was another one that i was really into um Fox had the whole anime lineup going on, like as Jenny was mentioning, right? So it was mm -hmm. like Digimon played a very big role in me ah, growing up. Yep. Um, I have like very vivid memories of like seeing that first movie with my cousin. Yep. Um, and then just like it, it, it's such a, a perfect memory in my in my mind. It's where like excited going into the theater to watch this movie that everybody else thought we were were crazy. Like, why do you want to go see this animated? thing like there, there's other movies what do y'all want to do? And we're just like freaking out yeah. right because it's like this, this this giant poster of like Agumon and we're like oh god uh mm -hmm. <laughs> having a good time um but also in 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 that same era was like things like shaman king um oh my god that, shaman king <laughs> that that anime uh also doubles as like one of my favorite anime of all time and like really really what, uh, honestly like the the idea of like my nickname being Zen and like my whole personality of like not worrying about things that you can't control comes from yo. Like Did a not lot of my personality comes from yo. Um I I love that show to death. Uh and I, I haven't had a chance to watch like the the remake that they did recently. Yeah. Um I've been wanting to. Um but it, it it's stuff like that. Zoys was another one that I got into in, in those early years as well. Mm -hmm. Um but it, it was very much a thing that um, I could only talk to like my cousin about uh, mm -hmm. because in those years for me personally, like being a black person, it was like very weird. Um, yeah. It was like not really accepted for, for like a lot of my other peers, right? Interesting. It was very much like a thing of like black people don't watch that stuff, which yeah. was, it was such a weird idea, but that's what it was like being like a nerd in like those times. Would you would you say it's um, changed now? Very much so. Very yeah, much so. Because it feels Absolutely. like it has. It feels like everybody it is a nerd right now, <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And it's so cool. But like those those mid nineties, early two thousands, like if I wasn't walking around listening to hip hop and stuff, I was like an outcast, and it was just like a very weird thing. And I'm over here just listening to J pop, just like. Uh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it was almost like I had to like hide it for a very long time. So I didn't have a lot of people to bond over anime with until pretty much my adult life. Ah. Um, until like after high school, after college, mm -hmm. um, or for what little college I did. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's really where I started. Uh, not knowing what anime was, but watching Dragon Ball and Pokemon and Digimon and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I think that's so funny. Sorry, I, no, go ahead. I've heard this a few times where they're like, black yeah. people can't be into anime. There's, if yeah. you are, you must have yellow fever or some crap like that. Yeah. And the thing is, though, that's really weird because almost mm -hmm. every black person I know was super into anime. It's like you guys all just yeah. went underground and didn't know you were there at the same time. <laughs> Basically, right? But it, it, it was this weird, like, it, it, it was weird wearing it on your sleeve. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it's like everybody is like a closet weeb. But like, you can't let other people show, you can't let other people see that because then it would like diminish your, your overall appearance. Mm -hmm. um, very, very stupid looking back at it, but it, that's it, just kind of how it was, you know? God, it is stupid. <laughs> yes, it, it, it is so stupid. I, 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 I'm saying that with such like emphasis mm -hmm. right now because like, I also like kind of feel that, um, at, le at least the circle that I hung out with was very like I don't know they they did like anime but it wasn't so I, I I would say I dipped more into the kind of more niche stuff as I like got older and became more confident with being comfortable with that stuff right mm -hmm. because there is like I think for a lot of people and fairly so I think uh certain stigmas when it comes to anime and certain parts of anime culture that I was like don't want to be associated with that so like but at the end of the day you know like uh if you're a good person and the the, the anime legitimately isn't bad and you're not being like a weirdo about it like it, it it's everything is like okay you enjoy this thing yeah. it brings you comfort and we all have like different reasons that these things bring us comfort whether it is uh bonding with friends you know at a younger age or suddenly realizing that you connect with so many people at an older age um okay. i don't know it's 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 been a real treat i guess like being obsessed with anime the like past couple years and just being yeah. okay with being um obsessed with anime you know uh Okay, so with so with that being said, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna talk about. Uh, I want to know. Well, you know, hang is... on, hang on. Before. Oh we wait, do... you're right. I have you? I have to talk about me. <laughs> it's it's the way it's the way that I forgot about myself. I was just so into y'all's you... answer. You're approaching this just as like an interviewer. You know I, was. I was. It was it was it was the the interviewer in me that like mm -hmm. uh, got got me excited to just hear more of both of y'all two's answers. Well, one because like I said at the beginning of the stream, uh, I knew I was gonna get like new stuff from Jenny. I didn't know the Zen stuff was Shaman King related. Like already off rip, I'm learning like new things about this like homie that I hang out pretty much weekly with. So. Uh, j Great stuff for a first podcast for me. Immediately a success already. And <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so for me, uh, I, I, I guess, I guess I would say the first anime I watched was Pokemon. Uh, mm -hmm. Pokemon was really easy for me to get into, right? Because my name is Asher, so of course it was easy to be. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> I am the protagonist. Yeah, <laughs> it's easy. It was easy for me to <laughs> self insert <laughs> because it was just like, oh yeah, I am. I am like Ash, um, and I, I, I specifically vividly remember um, after school, uh, my parents were working, and I had to go over to a friend's house and uh, stay stay with them, or it, it was my aunt's house, and so. My my cousins and um, my sister they 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 weren't really into Pokemon. Um, I think I think at the time they were more into like Barbie and Beanie Babies and stuff like that. And me, I would turn on the after school like tsunami, and just my aunt would make mashed potatoes. They were instant. <laughs> I remember those specifics, and then I would watch Pokemon. And those were my like first. I would say moments with anime but like like zen said it was just cartoons right mm -hmm. um it wasn't until i would say middle school because i was also watching dragon ball and stuff like that you know in between that time i would say the first time i really kind of realized there was like maybe some kind of dif differentiator or things start to feel kind of strange between like what i saw in normal american animation 
or and 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 this like new thing that I started seeing more of anime was in middle school when my friend said and and at this time I lived in Iceland so I've been a little bit more detached from anime at the time um my friend said oh th he was pointing at a shelf at a store this is my favorite anime and it was a copy of Yu Yu Hakusho and yeah. we started plowing through Yu Yu Hakusho and there isn't there wasn't like it has a 90s aesthetic but also nothing looks like it <laughs> you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. it has a very like distinctive art style and it was so much darker than any of the pro you know like yusuke as a pro tag is a more more like an anti-hero uh mm -hmm. not 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 a good guy <laughs> really you He's know absolutely an asshole yeah an <laughs> asshole and a delinquent um and you know more violent than any past animes that i've seen um i think that was the first anime i watched that had like actual cussing in it like when i heard yusuke call somebody a son of a bitch i was like oh i'm in <laughs> <laughs> you're so excited <laughs> Like I, was, I saw it on Adult Swim one night, and I was like, "Oh, this is my new favorite show. This is yeah. great. Keep, keep keep this up." Yeah, and and see see for me, I I didn't have access to anything like Adult Swim at that time. Like Toonami had disappeared from my life, but a homie just really really liked that show, and I just couldn't stop devouring it. And it just kept getting better and better. The Dark Tournament arc, the um, uh, my like username like growing up through i want to say like most of high school was like kaito and it's because of that one character in the chapter black arc who his power was to it, it was like an alphabetical game like you couldn't you couldn't say certain oh, words the word thing yeah the word he, game he uh, he's the first dungeon essentially yeah that's house. right <laughs> exactly yeah, he, kurama beats him yeah kurama beats him by making him laugh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he just, he, that that like visual gag of seeing the entire alphabet and like, you know, he's just starting to snicker, so you just hear a, and 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 you see the H highlighted, and he uh -huh. when he starts busting out laughing and all the letters are getting highlighted, <laughs> and then his soul gets removed from the body. Uh, it's such a cool moment for like, Karama who. I don't know. We're, we're, we're used to any, like, shonen animes uh, having, like, I punch the dude really hard and I win, you know, types of moments. But mm -hmm. but that moment was, like, a genuine test of, like, knowledge. And it, it was cool with one of the side... One of the best ensemble casts, right? Yu Yu Hakusho. Absolutely. Uh, just really great to get a highlight with Kurama. Um, and then it also wasn't just Yuzuke, like being because Yusuke can be dumb and win fights right mm -hmm. like he would fall in the water and then like loot and win fights you know somehow Yusuke he he beefed it in that room right he like was the damsel in distress yeah he was the damsel in distress they were on a rescue, they were on a rescue mission to save him <laughs> and he was completely helpless <laughs> yeah exactly and so like I, I would also say because, like, Dragon Ball has a little bit of an ensemble cast, too, but most of the time it's Goku. Um, and then, like, Ash, I would say, as well. It's, like, mostly Ash. I think Yu Yu Hakusho for the first time was me seeing, like, a really well-handled ensemble cast of completely different characters. Um, and I don't know. From, from, from that point on, it was, uh, I don't know, the rest is history, right? Like, it, it, it's... I, I fell in love from that point forward and had to seek out had to seek out more. Yeah. So, all right, did that? Did it, that? It's, it's it's interesting you talk about like that was the first time you like you realized this was like a different genre. This was something that was different. Mm -hmm. So it's like that moment for me was wasn't until actually um until Naruto actually was started to be published in Shonen Jump, actually. Uh, and that was after I moved to Florida, which was like 2003-ish, mm -hmm. around there, 2002, 2003. Um, and I was walking through a Winn-Dixie one day, uh, and I saw a Shonen Jump on, on the counter, and I was like, what is this? Right? And that, that was my first experience with manga in general. 
Um, and then I was flipping through it, and that was when, like, um, I think uh, Yu Yu Hakusho had a run in there. It was Naruto in there. Dragon Ball Z was in there. I think Yu Gi Oh might have had a run at that time as well. Um, and I was like, whoa, this is pretty cool. Uh, I didn't know that uh, the the things that I like had, like, this comic form of it. This is really sick. And that, that was when I, like, dived more into it. And uh, in Naruto at that time uh, had pretty much just started getting, like, the, the, the anime run as well in Japan. Uh, they weren't too far in. Um, so when I was looking up online one day, I found fan subs of it. Uh, and then that just opened up a whole new can of worms. And I was like, oh, this is what this whole thing is. Uh, <laughs> yup. Right? <laughs> it yep. just led me down the dark rabbit hole um, of just everything anime. Uh, so it, it's pretty funny hearing that's how you uh, came to recognize this whole thing. Uh, but then I learned about manga and anime in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. think I had two awakenings of anime. Okay. Well, what <laughs> the first one... The first one was that uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, same actually. Hell um, yeah. It is my favorite anime of all time, and I am really happy to see rewatch it again over and over, and it actually holds. Like it's not. Yeah. Yes. It was because I was impressionable and young. It's actually extremely well written, um, mm -hmm. and I think the fact that it was in English made it a little bit more accessible and had fantastic yeah. English actors. And I'll kind of go into that probably as we talk about future animes about how. They've changed. I, I didn't grow into anime. Like I didn't keep up with it after I first got into it, and then mm -hmm. I like stepped away for a really long time and came back to it. Yeah. But when I came back, I feel like it was very different. They had done a whole different path with production that made it more relatable and more realistic, I guess, and more accessible. Kind of like the same way you might say, like uh, the genius of uh, David Chappelle and Kevin Hart is that they make black humor accessible for everybody. Like you yeah. don't have to mm -hmm. be black to get the jokes. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so. Um, the first, I guess, uh, my first awakening had to be probably Yu Yu show. I found it actually, it was in uh, Shonen Jump originally. It was one of those ones. Uh, Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, oh, Bleach. Knights of the Zodiac. Um, a lot of good names that we're seeing now actually get shows. Uh, Shaman King was also a big one in that one too. So mm -hmm. I didn't even know they actually had a, an anime um, and that they're doing a remake now. Um, yeah. But the second awakening was Oran Host Club for me. <clears throat> oh, Ooh, what a such what, a good one! Actually, actually, just watched yeah, just, that. Uh, just watched it for the first time. Like, I think we just finished it. I want to say about three or four weeks ago. It's it's gonna be an absolute treat when I go back to like the homies that I watched it with and tell them like somebody brought on Oran as like uh, a very. <laughs> a very like important anime to them and, and they're just gonna like lose it we're no doubt gonna be talking about that <laughs> that's awesome what 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 was it about oran that you like loved i think since i've watched it i love hearing people's opinions uh, on it it was so when you when i when you think about all the animes i just listed mm -hmm. and the ones that we've talked about already they're all fighters they're all like yeah angry kids being like teenagers <laughs> and having all the power in the world that they can punch their teacher in the back of the head without anybody seeing it yeah 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 <laughs> stuff like that, thing yeah. that we always wanted to do <laughs> and then or, or sailor moon we have a second secret identity and then they came out with hannah montana it was basically the same concept anyway oh my god told, that was like the I, main i need thing that was, thesis <laughs> <hearing it>. incredible <laughs> i love that and the moon is just hannah montana <laughs> <laughs> but then um you had Oran Host Club that was extremely self-aware. Yep. And this is where I started to see philosophy start to come into anime. Because then fo closely following that was your line, April. So we have a ton of um, literary techniques, philosophy, and it just seems so much more intelligent. And then I started to give, you know, then you, I guess I started to reevaluate anime with that intelligence mm -hmm. and kind of like, oh man, that's that's brilliant. Like when I watched, rewatched Yu Yu show again in college, um, then it started to make this whole fleshed out culture story and spiritual journeys, right? Mm -hmm. It's more than just someone who was, it was a, more than just a coming of age story. It was actually mm -hmm. like a spiritual journey. And then like the, that desire to know why we're even alive, you know, why we exist, which was great. And then Oran, um, you had sexuality and tropes. And then why are we appealed to these things? What even is the law of attraction? Yeah. You know, becomes a big story in that one. And it was like, wow, anime can actually convey these stories brilliantly and beautifully. So then I wanted to explore what else were they going to, you know, were they doing recently? I'd missed since I stopped watching. 
Um, and so, yeah, I, that's what I would say. I had two awakenings in anime, and that's where I've been ever since. Uh, you know, watching mm-hmm. Oran. It came, it came on Netflix, so I made it even more accessible. Yep. Fantastic American um, voice actors. You know, sorry that one turned to be a piece of crap, but. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> it happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. reeling over one of my favorite bands, lead singer, uh, you know, recently having allegations too, so Oof. it's everywhere, man. But yeah. um can't knock the art that came out um no. from the writers and the other cast members and just the story and what it does to to speak to now a wider audience, which is I'm I'm happy anime is more accessible now. I don't want it to be a niche thing that I have to keep secret and climb out of my skin when I enter a game shop. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Suddenly you're I'm free. (laughs) (laughs) That's so awesome to hear. That that it it, is it's funny that you have mentioned both Yu Yu Hakusho and um Oron. Because then now you're some sort of weird amalgamation of uh, my friend Steph and I. Because Yu Yu Show is my favorite, or one of my most, like, important, I guess, um, developmental anime, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, then, and then for uh, her, she was very clear about Oron being important to her. Which is, which is why I was like, well, we gotta watch it now. You know, like, I feel like I've, I've, I've become much closer friends with you. Uh, let me see this. What's the big deal? And and also my sister uh watched it when she was in I want to say like middle school, high school. And I found out she was keeping that I, I when I found out she was watching it around that time, I was like, why didn't she tell me to watch it? She was like and and, and, <laughs> and uh she was she she said she was like hiding it. She was like, you know, she was watching it, she was sneaking into the computer and like watching it. And I was like, mm-hmm. she was doing the same thing we were all doing, you know. I just, I just didn't yeah. know it, and it blows my mind that hers was Oron. Um, so I don't know. That's that's super neat to hear. Um, and hearing these favorites is actually like now, now that I've actually finally said my piece. Uh, I do, <laughs> I do. I feel like this is like very standard for a first episode. Uh, mm-hmm. But I wanted, uh, and it's a strange number, if only because I want to tweet good pictures with it you know i gotta make sure our clout is very in line uh the the clout engine and uh you know what is your top four favorite anime uh of all time or up to this point obviously and so we're, we're actually gonna start with with zen on this one oh, whoa god. Top four. <laughs> oh thank god listen i was i was about to pass the ball so hard I just uh, had that moment of like being yep. in, in, in elementary school and they're going in alphabetical uh-huh. order and Tran is at the end of the alphabet. I love that. So, <laughs> so uh, my, my last name also begins with a D. Uh, so it was like actually would have been last because it's Tubbs. So you 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 would have got called. Uh, I but... actually would have been first. <laughs> But, oh, true. You know, but, but you're the host. But so I'm the you, host, so I'm never first. You have the fun responsibility of just like passing it to others first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? That's what I love about hosting. I like <laughs> first. Uh, man, uh, top four. So this, it's it's interesting because I've I've consumed so much anime at this point in my life that like mm-hmm. a top four or even top ten or even a top twenty is like something that changes frequently. Absolutely. Right? Um, all, always, and it's just yeah. like I remember something else, and I'm like, oh yeah, this this made me feel like this. I, I put this up here, um, but I I, I would have to say top four in in no particular order because again, these things can change. Um, yep. Would be first off would be Chihayafuru, okay, um, which I know uh, Asher you you watched pretty recently, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know, Jenny, have you seen Chihayafuru at all? No. Uh, so Please it, explain it, it's, it. <laughs> it's Please. it's a really wonderful story uh, of a girl named Chihaya, and she discovers this game um, called uh, Karuta, right? Which is this uh, it is this Japanese card game. It's it's almost like a game of mem- uh, memory in a way. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, essentially it is, it is based off of these hundred poems, um, and you have these cards set out in front of you, and there is a speaker that will speak the first line of a poem, and you have to uh, hit. The card that matches the poem that they're talking about. Um, it it's it sounds weird, and it and it, it kind of is. Uh, but when you watch it, it it's really fascinating, and, and you hear a lot about the stories behind all the poems that are written. Um, usually, it connects with the characters in some way. 
Um, but it's this wonderful drama of like Chihaya trying to discover like what she wants to do in life and she finds Karuta as an outlet to like push all of her energy towards. Uh, but it's also a really good uh, love story in a sense that it, it's uh, it, it's this love triangle that goes on between her and two of her, her best friends. And they're, they're all really close with each other. Um, but it is her juggling this emotion of like, I want to become competitive in Karuta. I want to learn more about Karuta. I don't have time to uh, basically sort my feelings out on who I personally care for. But these other two that are also focusing on their Karuta lives are trying to juggle their emotions and like, can, like, like, can, you know, can we sway Chihaya's heart basically, mm -hmm. right? Uh, without ruining like this friendship that we all have. Um, and and there, there are moments where like, a lot of the times, uh, like Tai Chi, who, who's one of the boys, and and Aruta, like they're they're kind of at each other's throats in a lot of times. But also, they very much care for each other, and it's this it's this wonderful show of just like setting boundaries and like knowing when you cross them and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But it it also does such a great job of like, not only is it like a really good drama, but it's also a really good sports anime it because is. it really captures what it is to be a competitor, um, and like being new to something as well as being already like experienced in like being a very strong player. So like Aruta comes from a family uh, who his grandfather was the the champion, the reigning champion for like the last like five, six, seven years or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of expectation that's placed upon him to become the next the next champion. Um, and then you have Chiai who just started, but she has like this gift for it. Uh, and then you have Taichi who has no like <laughs> any sort of like sort of, of, of you know, ties to Karuta uh, and, and he's struggling with like how can I get better because I want to be better than Aruta because clearly that's something that like Chihaya loves and I want to get good at it for her and, and mm -hmm. then he discovers like he wants to do it for himself it, it's it's insane um, and then it has like such a great ensemble cast as well like the new characters that get introduced because Chihaya wants to create a Karuta club at her high school uh, so you get this wonderful showing of like now how do you teach this game to new players and how do you motivate them to want to be competitive and it's okay that some don't want to be the best. Some just want to play with their friends. Like, you know, it, 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 it's it's amazing. It's it's absolutely amazing. I highly, highly recommend anybody to watch it. Yep. Um, it makes me cry like every other episode. <laughs> yeah. it, it does a great job of setting up like the villains, right? And, and you yes. start feeling for them and you get their stories and stuff like that. And it, it's a case of you never... It, Chihaya is obviously the main character, right? Yes. But there are times when like, you end up rooting against her because you feel so much more strongly for the other person she's against, right? Like you, you form that sort of ties with these sort of antagonists that show up. And it's just like, I want you to win, but I also want Chihaya to win. I don't want yeah. anybody to lose. Yeah. Why do you <laughs> play? This sucks. Right? Why do you play? This, this sucks. Why do you um, play? Yeah, so I, I highly ch recommend checking it out. Mm -hmm. um, Another anime on my list would be uh, so uh, I, I'm currently rewatching Full Metal Alchemist. Okay, um, FMA, and, and I, I'm rediscovering <laughs> how much I love that show. Um, so I, I introducing it to my friend Drew, uh, and this is his first time watching it. And we're we're going through both series. We're going through Full Metal Alchemist the original, and then we're going to go through Brotherhood right afterwards. Yes. Um, so we're we're wrapping up the original Full Metal Alchemist, and I I still I know there are <laughs> there are camps that will tell you like you know forget the original, only watch Brotherhood, things like that. But I think there's a lot of good in the original show as well. I do too. Like a lot of the stuff around Scar and a lot of the stuff around Ishbal uh, is really, really good. And, and obviously that's where they focus it, right? Because the yes. manga wasn't finished at the time. So we're gonna, we're gonna drag out this arc. Um, but, but that show still holds up. It still hits really hard. Uh, I forget kind of how fast that show moves yeah it's fast um it, it's really fast like when, when you get to the stuff with like nina for example everybody knows knows that whole deal yeah. um the chimera stuff uh that's only like, that's like episode five yep. <laughs> like that is like we're hitting the ground running with this shit yeah i was like why am i crying every other episode this is ridiculous uh this show is dark <laughs> yep <laughs> which is something drew keeps saying every time because like <laughs> he had a uh, he he had a very like loose connection to Full Metal. Like he watched a couple of episodes here or there, and in in his mind, it's very much like Ed and Al are like these wacky characters and wacky hijinks and stuff like that. And like, sure, there are some dark moments here or there, but like you you realize just like 
how long that show stays in like this dark place. Like it almost never comes up to breathe uh, for any sort of like, like can, can we just have a fun time, a fun episode here or there? It's like, no, those are few and far between. We're gonna stay in this dirt real quick. We're gonna make you feel bad. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna push you through all the emotions. Um, they have like jokes here or there, but yeah, that's your breathing room. Is the that, that's your breathing room. It, yeah. It's it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, ah, get your breath now, now cry. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I, I I would put that up there as well. Okay. Um, going past that, uh, man, it it gets hard. Now it's uh, I, I, yeah. I immediately want to jump to like the default answer of like you know Cowboy Bebop was up there, but but that that also is a really really strong show, and it's one that I I've rewatched several times. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I rewatched it recently as of like maybe two years ago it was like the last time I rewatched it. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and that's a show that I, I love both the, the dub and the sub. Like Same. Ev everything about the production around Cowboy Bebop is just like stellar. 10 out of 10 amazing OST, amazing stories. Um, there were some just... episodes, if I'm not mistaken, where yeah. the director heard mm -hmm. the music first and then mm. wrote the episode. Yeah. Because he was just like, this music is so good. I'm going to write around the music that you have made for it. And I think that's, that's crazy. Like, that's pretty phenomenal right like it's it's it, pretty insane um there's like a push and pull creatively with that show that clearly mm -hmm. uh showcases just how much the people loved making that show uh, yeah and it's moments like that that some that you could be like the composer made this like banging thing mm. i have to make an episode like around it because like yeah to me this person put out this amazing thing well see yeah. i think it's um it's the same concept of Fantasia, Passion Project, right? Mm. They start, the music was first, and they created visuals that go off. You're the right. Um, there's a lot of... When you when you realize that's the philosophy behind the story, it actually changes the methodology that went into creating the story. You actually get typically a lot more non-linear, creative, um, not really heard before stories. Mm -hmm. So they do have to tie some element of familiarity into it, so that's probably why you know they created the, the character of Julie, but we never see her, really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. When we do, we're not even sure we saw her. We're like, this had to be a fucking. That's game. true. Right. That's yes. true. Yes. Oh, great episode. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. I, I love uh, that answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and the last one. Yeah. What's our uh, last one? So Natsume Yujin Cho, Natsume and his book of friends. Um, what is, what is I that? I actually haven't heard either of you it. Haven't seen. Okay. So Natsume. Oh wait, Ninjincho? It's... Ninjincho? Yujin Cho. Oh, Yujin Cho. Okay. Yujin Cho. That's me and his book of friends. Okay. Um, this one's a pretty long anime. I think there's like six seasons and like a movie, something like that. And I don't even think it's it's done yet. Um, oh, wow. But essentially, it, it is about this kid named uh, Natsume. Um, and he he lost his parents at an early age. Um, and he's constantly moving from household to household that essentially nobody wants him. Um, and the reason because is he sees yokai right oh okay um and and it terrifies him um and and he's always like uh, nobody else can see see this stuff um but he he will see something and it will freak him out and everybody else thinks he's crazy right mm -hmm. and he's trying to like tell people like no there's something there uh it's trying to get me or or something like that e even like peaceful like uh spirits like will just freak him out and he wants nothing to do with it so you know, his adoptive parents would be like, we don't want to deal with this kid anymore. Move him somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he eventually lands in uh, in this one household that is very accepting of him, right? Uh, and he is trying to like, he's trying to repay their kindness, basically. He's trying to be a good kid. He's trying not to like let the spirits kind of uh, influence him to be like, uh, freaking out and stuff like that because he really cares for the people that are currently caring for him. Um, but it, it goes further in that he finds this book um, that was written by his, I want to say it was his grandmother, it might have been his aunt, one of the two, um, that has like this list of names, uh, their list of yokai names. And essentially his aunt uh, would befriend, befriend uh, mm -hmm. all of these yokai um, and when she writes their names down in this book, essentially, uh, she is able to control them, right? It, it's basically like she now owns their soul. Um, so all of, all of these yokai 
are are after Natsume for this book because whoever has this book now controls all of these yokai. Or they simply want the book to release their name because they want their soul back. Uh, right? Um, uh -huh. So Natsume, he... <laughs> I, I, I love this kid. Honestly, he really <laughs> wants nothing to do with any of this. He's yeah. just like, as long as you're like a good yokai, like I, I will release your name. But a lot of the yokai that finds him like they are enraged they don't want to hear it they don't even they see him as his aunt because he smells similar to her like they don't even see him they think he is her yeah. um and, and it's this the story of him learning to befriend yokai it is him um going to school and finding friends that will accept him for who he is and, and believing in him when he tells him these things and it, it is such a it's it's a slow anime it mm -hmm. takes a long time for it to really get going but when it does and you see like the small growths of Natsume like opening up to others, no longer like keeping everything inside, <clears throat> learning to find happiness, learning to find acceptance, mm -hmm. right? It, it is a wonderful story. Yeah. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend watching it. it. It is one that I hold close to my heart. Um, it is one that I, I always tell people to watch, but it is a big ask because there is so much of it, yes. <laughs> right? It's like six seasons. Each one is like 24 episodes. It's, the, it's one piece, the One Piece curse. It's almost, it's, it's almost like One Piece at this point, right? <laughs> but I guarantee you, you, you will fall in love with this show. I, I think both of you, honestly, uh, hearing hearing what you guys like, mm -hmm. I think you guys would really get a lot out of this show. It's it's really relatable as well for anybody that like has trouble opening up to people or just like making friends is hard mm -hmm. you know um it, it's going to connect with you in, in such a personal way i love uh, that so that that those are my four for now that might change for now that might change <laughs> that might change so, tomorrow i can't say that difficulty of making friends or opening myself mm -hmm. up is necessarily a theme that i mm -hmm. necessarily draw to mm -hmm. but just mm -hmm. what you're describing um, it sounded a lot like the animation for was it ghost stories the anime mm. that uh, got redubbed with yeah. like. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I watch that dub once a year. Is that the one with the. You know, the. Uh... <laughs> There's like what that character that that who is? freaks out. <laughs> Can I get that subtitle, please? <laughs> There's like a character that like Most freaks out, people. right? That just like. He says a bunch of gobbledygook in the middle of like a police station or something. Uh, I actually haven't watched that anime myself, but. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Not both of you. Oh, we're gonna watch that. <laughs> I... Masterpiece. Absolutely, one hundred percent. It uh, is a masterpiece. Original dub or or new dub? <laughs> <laughs> Only the new dub. I don't even know if the other one exists still. <laughs> <laughs> It's That's so funny couple. because they, they rewrote that entire script. So, like, if you watch the, the Japanese version of Ghost Stories, it is a very serious anime. Yeah. Uh, it, not a good one, actually. Not a good one at all. Uh-huh. Um, and then the, they get they... the dub. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then they get the dub, and they're just like, all right, we're going we're gonna to play with this shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just nonsense. Like, Fuck it. It's already been drawn. Let's yeah. Go yeah. <laughs> See Let's just go ahead. Did. It was like they played, you know, whose line is it anyway, and just redubbed over. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love what it is. that. That's really that's what it, it what sounds it like. That's yeah. so like, awesome. <laughs> it's almost like they, they were like, all right, we, we're, we're going to become, we're going to play as a D and D characters and we're going mm -hmm. to, to give them random voices. All right. One of them becomes basically like a, a Jehovah's witness going door to door. <laughs> that's so incredible. <laughs> it's just out of nowhere. That's like, what? It's, it's the way I didn't know that I only like have seen the clips. Right. And I thought they were mm -hmm. very funny and just thought like, oh, well it's just a bad dub. Um, mm -hmm. It's nice to know that. So, so would you guys say that like they kind of leaned into it and we're just kind of oh. like, we're gonna they we're gonna rip it and rip it. Into it. Hard. Yeah? yeah, hard. And it it it's definitely problematic at points. Oh <laughs> like, no! It, it, it absolutely oh, yeah. goes way further than it should. Uh -huh. But I, I Let's absolutely. Just say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I still I still laugh. Yeah, <laughs> I got I got I gotta watch it. I'll I'll I'll, I'll take y'all's words for it. That's a great. It's easy to watch because it's pretty short. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the uh, the episodes are short. It's not six yeah. seasons, twenty four episodes each. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, Jenny, are you ready, or do I have to do my piece? I would actually love for you to go next because I I have mine, but um, mm. I'm I'm really curious how different we might be or how similar because I'm I'm hoping for different and I feel like Asher, you and I are gonna be very different. Okay, 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 okay. Well, uh, I'm I'm gonna get the first one out of the way because I feel like 
we've already covered quite a lot of ground on it, and that's Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho is, you know, ensemble casting. Perfect, uh, dare I say a perfect dub. Um, mm -hmm. With some of the most, like, I don't know, just really, really iconic voices uh, voicing those characters. <laughs> Kuwabara? It's Christopher Kuwabara. Sabat, right? I'm Kuwabara. Christopher, <laughs> Christopher Sabat really knocked it out of the park those years with Kuwabara and, and Vegeta, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel like we said a good amount of Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, I have a tendency to flip back and forth depending on just how I'm feeling for my favorite anime, my top one, between Yu Yu Hakusho and Madoka Magica. Oh, but <laughs> yeah. Madoka yeah. Madoka Magica, Madoka Magica is so cool to me because I definitely was a very like, as I was going through college, very into deconstruction of art, very into like genre bending, um, maybe like a more meta approach or like looking at the what's the word I'm looking for here like the the preconceived notions of a genre and then flipping them on its head and madoka magica was my my sister one day she she, she had seen it a long time ago this was like during when i was in college and she just she was bugging me here or there uh my friend phil was also bugging me here or there and was just like i think you'll like madoka and it wasn't until like i actually watched it the reason why they just couldn't say any more than that. Because to really give anything away from Madoka could, like, you you risk the, like, integrity of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because, like, all you, uh, all you can say is, like, I think you should watch Madoka. It's a magical girl anime. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like... That's that's really it, and I think we're at a point where like everybody knows Madoka. It's very hard to find someone that is not at least exposed to Madoka in some way. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but when you do, yeah. it is such a great feeling to like introduce it to somebody. Yes, um, because that that was my old roommate Kim. Um, <clears throat> this, this was well after like Madoka aired, and mm -hmm. I recommended it one day. Oh, or actually, I, it wasn't even actually a recommendation. She found it on on Netflix actually. I think at the time. Mm -hmm. uh and i i came downstairs from my room and she was like on episode two and she was like hey rob i found this anime that i'm really enjoying and i took one look at it and i was like i'm gonna go make some popcorn um, <laughs> and I, I sat like right i sat right next to her and i'm just like okay we're gonna watch Madoka." yeah yeah, yeah. And, 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 uh, what was the reaction like was, after i want to I'm horrified wanna... horrified <laughs> Horrified, but really into it. Like, like absolutely loved Madoka. <laughs> uh, but, but when when you when you get to some of the, those twists, uh, and it, it is just like you see what that show becomes. Yes. Uh, or what that show really is. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it is such a flip on that whole magical girl genre. It is. Um, that just like when when I first watched it was just I was stunned. Right. Like, yeah. This this is something so like how dare they do this? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly um, yeah, um, that that's a great memory for me actually yeah and 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 so it is one of those that like as as me and my sister have gotten older you know uh, we've always been close but like anime was another outlet to like be even closer well, her sharing madoka with me was like okay you know what take take your sister's recommendations a little bit more to heart she she does know what i would like and uh have been yeah have been in love with madoka ever since um uh, my third, this one's strange because I haven't caught up with it yet, but we are, we are fully planning to catch up to it. Uh, so from what I have seen of it, it's, it's crazy that it's in my top four. It's the, uh, first season of, uh, Made in Abyss. Made in Abyss is, uh, definitely in my top four. Have you seen Made in Abyss, Jenny? Uh -uh. Have you heard of it? Uh-uh. Oh man. Well, I just take a sip here. <laughs> um, Made in Abyss. How do I start with Made in Abyss? Made, made I heard about Made in Abyss <laughs> because a YouTuber I was following um put out a video why you should watch Made in Abyss. It was a new anime in 2017, so pretty pretty recent. Um but a little bit harder to watch because, like, it was only on Amazon. 
It's an it's not on Crunchyroll. What's funny is that for the Crunchyroll Awards, even though it doesn't stream on Crunchyroll, it won Best Anime of the Year. <laughs> That's funny, actually. Yeah, for Crunchyroll. Uh, mm. But anyway, it's... So there's this city. It's It's like an island. And in the middle of the city, there is a giant hole. And that hole is called the Abyss. And... The further you go down into the abyss, the more difficult it is to get back up. Because there are these, like, layers that if you try to break through them, they will, they affect you in a certain way. And it gets worse the further down you go. So, like, if you go to the first layer of the abyss and you try to come back up, you'll experience, like, nausea, you know? And, and that that's like a pretty that's not that bad but like let's say you go to the second layer and you try to come all the way back up you're you'll bleed from your eyes and like you know other you might start hallucinating and stuff like that but <clears throat> so that's the world of made in abyss <laughs> and essentially it's about a young girl she's an orphan um who wants to be an explorer of the abyss and one day she's kind of walking around town <clears throat> and she meets this robot boy who has amnesia and following the events of her finding this robot boy she she gets a letter that the orphanage like gives her a letter and the letter is from her mom who she thought was dead but essentially the letter had a couple of like drawings in it and one of them looked like the robot boy so the robot boy is interested because he has amnesia and he doesn't know where he's from and so he's like oh i want i can find answers relating to her mom and then the letter says that she is actually alive and that she's in the abyss and so our main character and this little robot boy uh embark on a journey to go into the abyss it's it's not a long first season it's only 12 episodes um and for anybody who's thinking of watching content warning there is violence uh specifically directed at children um and it is one of the most brutal heart-wrenching things i've ever watched uh i think the i think the it, like from top to bottom stunning stuff music by kevin penkin um, who is a stellar composer. Uh, I think the, the like, backgrounds and scenery is done by the same guy who did, like, Ghibli movies. So, like, the, the, the abyss and the landscapes of, like, the city are incredible looking, like, practically paintings. Um, the monsters are animated by a completely different person. So the monsters look, like, weird and almost, like, alien, which kind of makes them scarier. And... It just, I don't know, I think about it all the time. I, I remember showing a friend it, uh, and I have to share, I have to space my viewings of it because I, I get so distraught after watching it. I remember showing a friend it, and when I was done, I like asked him, I was like, what'd you think? I, I have like tears all over my face, right? Like I'm all messed <laughs> up, like my, my face is all puffy. And I'm like, what'd you think? And he's like, that was really sad. He was also crying. He was like, that was really sad. But watching you cry made me feel even sadder. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, damn. Because <laughs> I really was going through it. <laughs> and, now, and at this point, it was like the third time I had watched it. <laughs> so I'm just like, it, it, it's, it's phenomenal. And I'm, <clears throat> it's funny because uh, a friend of mine who lives in Taiwan uh, came to visit me recently and he, he's now back in Taiwan and we were talking about anime and he said uh, I, I asked him like what, what, what anime have you enjoyed recently and he was like okay I'm going to tell you the one that affected me the most and he was like it was uh, Made in Abyss season 2 and the movie uh, and so I was like damn I haven't watched it, part, partly because I'm scared to watch it, right? Because I'm so emotionally affected by season one. <laughs> and uh, he went through his whole spiel of why he loved it. He said season one 
is lollipops and rainbows compared to the movie and season two, which is so messed up. Like, yeah, I've already, I... like, damaged goods from the first season. So, like, what's going to happen to me after I watch the movie and the second season? And not only not only did he tell me to recently, my hairstylist, who I talked to about anime, <laughs> she, I, I was like, you watch Made in Abyss, right? And she's like, love it. And she was like, uh, she started talking about the second season. She was like, yeah, my boyfriend, my boyfriend watched it before uh, I got a chance to watch it and rewatched it with me again. But I remember coming home and he had stopped watching and uh he looked at me and he said i had to stop watching because that ep- episode absolutely shattered me and there are both my friend and my hairstylist said i believe you will know what episode it is let me know as soon as you watch it so i have two people that i have to immediately tell when I get, like, messed up, <laughs> that I, I watch the episode and how I'm feeling in that moment, which is crazy to me. Um, so, I love Made in Abyss Season 1. Uh, we'll see, we'll see, because that, that's definitely a choice. Like, Rob's stuff could change. Maybe I think Season 2 knocks it down a peg. Maybe I think it's too much. But, you know, I, I enjoy the catharsis of a good cry. Um, absolutely <laughs> and, but and as of right now even even just alone season one made in abyss is in my in my top four um and then uh, i feel like the last one kind of needs no introduction and it's kind of funny bring it up because rob always rob jokes about it with me um my my last one is uh is eva neon genesis evangelion um god it feels like whatever whatever could be said about Eva uh, has been said. <laughs> There's just like like yeah. the, the discourse on Eva has been going on for so long. Um, it's I, th- I think what blows me away about Eva is that final movie stuck the landing. Uh, yes. uh, 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 have Have you seen any of Eva, Jenny? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You seen it all? Yep. Like the movies yes. too. Yes. Um, that fourth movie really messed me up. Uh, because of the entire discourse around Hideki Anno and like how much I I remember I was seeing interviews of like people saying, if you were, when you're done with this, are you going to like miss it? And, and he would immediately say, no. Just straight answer, no, I'm not going to miss this. Like, there, there was this entire, like, does he hate the series? And fair enough if he does, because he received, like, death threats over it. Mm-hmm. But also, why is he still doing this? Does he really love it? I, I, I was contending with it for so long. Like, does he like Eva... <laughs> As, as like a creator, you know, I'm the type of person that really, I'm a little bit more nostalgic and I like the stuff that I create, but I also understand the person who likes to make something and then just be done with it and just move on. You know, I have friends who are like that and that's one of the things they loved about seeing those Hideaki Anno interviews and I like completely got it. But there was something in me that just could not believe that he disliked Eva because he wouldn't be still doing this. And once you watch that final movie and he kind of like wipes his hands of the series because um right Mari is kind of like a um what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't I I don't think allegory is the word, but like it, it it's like a personification of his wife. You know, and, 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 and how he, like, there's that moment where she reaches out to Shinji and she's like, come on, let's go. And and at this point, they're kind of like adults and they're heading into, like, the real world, which is very, like, fitting because he, he, he wants to do more, like, live action now. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's a very, like, I, I kind of got through it with this person and that, and through their support, I'm finally, like, out of it. 
And, but even like leading up to that moment, he's like Shinji is saying goodbye to certain characters, um, whether they're actual characters from the show, like Ray and stuff like that, um, mm-hmm. and moving on like from uh, uh, Asuka and stuff like that. Uh, to also, they're like at one point in a movie studio, and. I saw that scene, and I think that's the first moment that I really start, like, breaking down and crying when I'm watching the movie. Because, to me, I see that moment, and I see Hideaki Anno thanking the people who have put up with him all these literal decades of making this stuff. Because filmmaking isn't just one person. Like, they, you know, the person might have a very strong vision for it, but it's a collaborative effort. And for him to thank the people who have you know, went through it with him, that, 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 that absolutely, like, touched me. And then, to finally get my answer on whether or not he liked the series was when, um, the ending credits start playing, and we hear that song by, uh, Utada Haikeru. Um, Hikaru Utada, yeah. He, yeah, Hikaru Utada. Um, where, like, some of the lyrics say, like, I saw the Mona Lisa a long time ago. And it wasn't that special because I had my own Mona Lisa. And I was like, I, I, I'm crying again even harder because I'm like, <laughs> Eva, Eva, is his, Eva is his Mona Lisa. You know, like, I'm just like, and he went through all of this and we don't deserve this because, like, people have been so mean to him, you know? Like, it, it, it's, I really haven't seen anything like it from a artist and their art standpoint the 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 stuff transcends the the art itself transcends like itself is a weird way to explain it there's so much more to eva than just the story and the narrative that is eva right Mm -hmm. there's so much like outside of it and and because of that it is uh yeah it's definitely my top four and i think about it a lot (laughs) There you go. I look forward to the uh, two-hour Eva podcast uh, <laughs> featuring Pinoy Grigio. Uh. <laughs> that don't be so. Uh, it, it's funny because it definitely won't ju- be just me because uh, my friend Zach is also like a huge Eva guy. He would be so mad at me if I was holding like a two-hour uh, Eva podcast without him. He would mm. be so mad at me. He's bought like the e- the. He buys so much of that stuff. He's got like the big like Eva figures, you know, and the like, the Eva lobsters and stuff like that. Just the really ridiculous paraphernalia that, you know, that stuff is tied with. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's um, it's a rip roaring good time. So mm-hmm. and and that's my four. So Jenny, did did were those answers to your liking? Did it give you like a good gauge as to whether or not you're like super different or super the same? You chose some, some that I've um, did, and what else have you watched that those became your favorite ones? Mm-hmm. Like, they're... Evangelia definitely surprised me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think we all have a darkness that we like in our anime, too. So yeah. I, I have some on my list that are pretty dark. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of them I'm surprised it's considered a horror anime, because I thought it was pretty fucking great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. And then, yeah, I don't know. I thought you'd like more of the lighthearted stuff, but then you said Madoka Magica, and I was like, I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to, to be fair, I, I won't be surprised if I am the guy who is just like, because I, I eat up romance comedies. Mm-hmm. Absolutely devour them. I'm like on chapter 600 of like Tomo-chan is a girl. Uh, I'm, I'm all caught up with Yancha Gal. I'm all caught up with uh, my charms are wasted on Madaka Kun. Yeah, like I, I have, oh, I, I have a little bit of a sweet tooth. So yeah, I was expecting one of those to be somewhere on your list, and I was like, <laughs> I think I watched another one because of you posting it, and I was just like, God, this sucks. Why am I here? That's so funny. I love that. I love that. I'm waiting for one of those to show up. I mean, obviously, I can take a joke, right? Over on Host yeah. Club. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's fun. Uh, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was good. I think we have 
a lot of similarities and crossovers. So I'd be curious to hear, you know, what other ones, what ones we end up deciding to watch together and kind of book clubbing, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, never thought I'd say the word book clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> that is like a weird thing to say. It is a weird yeah, thing to say. I went clubbing, you know, book yeah. clubbing. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> All right. So my four, um, I have to say your name. That one. Uh, it was my wedding theme for a reason. Um, just a really complex story that is unique, I think, to Japan. A lot of concepts in there are unique to the culture. That And it's the first time I think I really experienced um, that level of, or that type of spirituality in a modern sense. Usually it's like someone has to go back into their past and all that stuff. This was like, sure, but it was like three years ago, you know, was the past. You know, <laughs> so that, that's kind of a cool um thing beautiful animation amazing soundtrack so yes. i will nerd out about music when we talk about these animes um yeah. just the the depth of composition that rad wimps was able to <clears throat> create and the variety of sound it was like the diversity of like radiohead um but for a movie you know so it's like almost questioning which one came first kind of a, a, a question to a cowboy bebop similar thing yes um unusual pairings of of music with certain moments um and it'd be and also nostalgic too which is kind of cool uh, um did i did i did i mention to you that me and rob are going to be watching rad wimps in april no yeah 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 we got the tickets oh got, my god that's awesome we got tickets hell yeah to new york. i'm so Where, excited where's this movie uh, new york new york Eric? Oh man! Mm -hmm. Yeah, I they have a yeah they have a tour going on this year. <clears throat> oh. I think they're doing only like ten shows in the U.S. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so we were like, oh, awesome. we got it right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> anyway. we need to maybe we need to do a showing of or a talk through something that they've done a score for too. Something Absolutely, else. It have to be your name. Absolutely, or it could just be your name because I will watch that <laughs> for a thousand time. <laughs> uh, I, I love that movie too. so much. It, it is one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm -hmm. same, um, same. It's almost like he had to work really. You could watch his progression of how much it took to get there too, with your name, mm -hmm. the, the brilliance of your name. Because even weathering with you kind of took a step back, honestly. Like it was, in my opinion, um, it wasn't a, it, it, from where he progressed from, and then it was like, yes, your name. Now what's next? And we went back. <laughs> <laughs> I have that same feeling. Honestly, yeah. I, I gained more of an appreciation for Weathering with You. So I, the first time I watched it, um, I, w I was I was disappointed, but I still enjoyed it, right? I thought it was still a, a good movie, but I was disappointed by it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second time I watched it, I gained like another appreciation for it. And I was like, okay, this is better than I thought it was at, at first. Uh, it still doesn't reach the same highs as Your Name does, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like that's just a really high bar. Uh, yes. for, for him. And I'm curious to see where, where Susume lands. Me too. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But um, I, I'm definitely a little higher on weathering with you now. This after a second viewing of of that movie, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right. The anime actually has that magic ability. Actually, that rewatchings mm -hmm. change it even like it changes your perspective on things, and and you almost yeah. learn something new each time. Which is, I don't know if that's something that they that is part of the art of it. But I've mm -hmm. felt that way about yeah. pretty a lot of different animes, like where I actually mm -hmm. like them less because of the second viewing, or I like them more, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so cool. That that's that's interesting. Um, and I did I did do a binge of all movies. But I think Shintai or Shinkai is the guy who made all the Your Name and yeah, and yeah. Makoto Shinkai. Makoto yeah. Shinkai. Yeah. So he I watched all of his movies, and it's like wow. Yeah, you you had a journey to get here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of interesting ones, titles in that one. Um, so your name, I'm going to put that one down at the top. Um, and then after that, it's going to get kind of dark. <laughs> Hell, I love Let's that. I love that. Strap in. So another one of my ones that I tell people to watch, it's, you know, it's the ones that are done short, 20 minute episodes, uh, Death Parade. Death oh, yes. What is it? Death Parade? Yes. Death Parade. Death oh, Death, Death Parade. Parade. Death Parade. <laughs> Death Parade. <laughs> How do we get here? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Okay. Death Parade. Death. Uh, okay. I ha tell me about Death Parade. I actually haven't heard of one it. My favorite. One of my favorite shows. Okay. It's an, earlier actually, Rob. I thought it was hilarious that you called out. Okay, this is a hard one to explain. Um, and yeah. I was like, yeah. is there an easy to explain anime? Like, really? Uh, you're right. You're right. You know, <laughs> Anytime you start describing anime, 
You sound ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely <laughs> insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's You're hilarious. like, yeah, there's an oasis, but there's, you know, the, there's a dungeon underneath it, and then there's this, like three headed monster. Everybody knows about him, though, so it's fine. So, but so, he's... <laughs> from your eyes, you know. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> and that's the mild version, right? Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> that's what I did on Saturday. What'd you do? Uh, I cried my eyes out. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think Death Parade is one that actually is easy to explain because mm. conceptually is all you have to do to like rope somebody in and then they start watching it. It's not hard to get through after that. Once you get started, it kicks it off. And that'll be something Paul can tell you. Um, and Rob, I don't know if you know Paul's my husband. Um, yeah. He he knows that he has to. I have to be sucked in the first episode. Um, okay. If I am not in love with it in the first episode, there is rarely a chance that I'll watch the second one. And if someone says to me, it's like eight or six and you'll get good. I'm, you lost me a gotcha. long time ago. <laughs> okay, I respect gotcha. it. Okay, good to so, know. So, Death Parade, 13 episodes, and 20 minutes each one. Great opening uh, song and animation. I don't know what they call that. It's opening. it's such a different vibe for, like, that show. What is like, actually like, how? I mean, the name of it yeah. is Death Parade, right? <laughs> right, and, and then you just have, like, this wonderful, like, song and dance that's going on in this in this theme song, and you're just like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I am like, in it's, my head right now. <laughs> it's so good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch um, this opening. Please. <laughs> fantastic. Um, Let's watch it after my, this recording. <laughs> it's on my anime workout playlist, because I just get hyped just, like, Ah oh, yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, yeah, great story. So I'm gonna tell it to you guys the way that a friend of mine is the one who roped me into it. It was like a friend that I didn't know watched anime, kind of a thing. We were having that conversation, and she goes, oh, "So you're you're in anime? I've been in anime. I've been getting into it a lot more. Have you seen Death Parade?" I was like, "No." She's like, "Okay, you're gonna love it." Um, the concept is: imagine this: you go to a bar, mm -hmm. and whatever you do at that bar decides whether you go to heaven or hell. Okay. No, that's it. <laughs> I'm just, that's it. I was going to leave it at that. Incredible. That's all, that's all you need. Yeah. Okay. But then it gets your gears, like, turning, too, because you're like, oh, when I go to a bar, I act like an idiot. So I guess I'm going to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or um, or there's the jokes, too, about not even jokes is reality, the liquid courage or the liquid truth. You know, it's mm -hmm. um, a truth serum of sorts, sober, what is it, sober thoughts, drunken actions or something like that. Yes. Um that starts to come out a little bit. Um, the concept of a bar, too, is a really great setting of, of Death Parade. Um, and what the, what the bartender is a symbol of. And, um, yeah, there's also a lot of great discussions that can come from every single episode. So nothing's filler, um, which is, I don't like wasting my time with fillers. So that's, that's I'm going to put Death Parade as one that I definitely recommend whenever I talk to people and they they tend to like philosophical conversations because yeah. that one is not one that you're going to be there for the romance or even the uh, the action or even a pretty anime it's actually quite just dark and that's it you know <laughs> um so yeah death parade is going to be on there um so i'm going to put this one in here as in my top based on the kind of some that you guys have listed but it came to mind as my favorite in this category and it's promised neverland Okay. Ooh, so that's a good one. I refuse to watch season two. Let me just go ahead and say that too. Because I think it left off on the perfect note uh, at the end of season one. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really want to change my opinion of where I felt like it, where, where it left off and how it progressed, how it got there. Um, all the little clues and, and the, the beautiful storytelling that I built. Um, the, the, and oh my God, super dark, you know, talking about violence on kids. <laughs> This is about the apex of that in my opinion. Um, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so I loved I loved that one because I also love the characters too. Yes. Um and and the honesty of the, the children. Mm -hmm. Honest. Um they seem real. They seem like kids. Because mm -hmm. uh, you see uh, one, I think one mistake anime made early on in a lot of ways that made it unrelatable is that a lot of the kids were like prodigies or they had to be brilliant in some way. Yes. And that made them yeah. almost unapproachable. Un, like, They're Mary you, Sue's. Yep. You wanted to be like them because they were so perfect. Whereas these characters yeah. are super flawed. But they're and they're still kids, you know. Mm -hmm. But they are geniuses. But that doesn't really play that much other than we understand we can get through the story a little bit faster because they're so smart, you know. Yeah. Uh, but they're about as smart as kids get, really. You know, they don't Love start that. doing anything that's like insane. Like, whoa! He just saw like the full <laughs> algorithm to make a mecha bot that's gonna crash them out of this. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and then 
And if anything, it's like they're they're characters that had uh, high intelligence and low wisdom, <laughs> which is yes. pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I I was kind of on the fence between two, okay. so it was either for the fourth one, the last hero, or Parasite. Oh, pa- it's funny. I don't know the last hero. I love Parasite. Yeah, I'm not sure about the last hero. Tell me about so, the last hero. Yeah. Uh, unlikely hero kind of a story. It's an old man. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people often talk about um, Howl's Moving Castle being kind of unusual because it has an old female as like the main protagonist. Yes. Uh, old. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Last Hero has a, is an old man who basically is super down on his life. He's been basically told that he's he's like pretty pathetic, be kind of useless at this point. Mm-hmm. Accidentally gains superpowers. <laughs> okay, all right. It's accident. Accidentally gained superpowers. Is very confused on what he's supposed to do with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that he has them. And aims to do the whole time good. He's so wholesome. Um, and he really tries to like encourage people to believe him when he says, like, oh, please don't do that. Please, please stop. Like, I really don't. Please. <laughs> uh-huh. And then, then oh. his superpowers take over, essentially, and he can't do anything about it. So he just becomes, like, a, a badass accidentally every time. He doesn't... <laughs> and he, he gains a nemesis who just, you know, um, is actually more commonly a, a hero. Uh, so that, that's kind oh, of Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, he is not. He is not glorified in any way, shape, or form. They do not. They give him like a wonderful a reward for everything good he does. Either, if anything, he gets like beat down even worse for being good. Um, and it's it's kind of like we are when we don't thank those who give it their best. You know, what does it do? So I love the concept. I think there's a lot of um, economic commentary in mm-hmm. it. Honestly, if you think about people who give it their all, live their best life, try to just stay afloat and then they don't get ever thanked at the end you know Mm -hmm. Um, they just become one of the numbers and I think that's a little bit of the commentary that happens here so um, beautiful animation Mm -hmm. great fight scenes yes Mm -hmm. with an old man (laughs) (laughs) I just I just got a message in chat that really struck with me Uh, uh, Phil said that it's it's from the same creator as Gantz so oh boy uh, You're that, in for a trip. Yeah, that means I'm in for a trip. You know, like <laughs> e- 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 even though like I'm already appealed by like what you have explained to me, um, Gans is wild. So like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know. That's such an interesting concept from the creator of Gans to tackle. Uh, how that may, uh, th- based on your description, I'm feeling an air of sadness. <laughs> so I'm just kind of like, man. I don't think you ever put an old person in an anime and it ends well. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're gonna That's... fall in love and it's not gonna end great. I mean, well, you know what? Oh, actually, this is a question I've been wanting to ask this whole time, but I don't really know where it was a good time to like shove it in. So I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Avatar, it. is that an anime? Avatar: The Last Airbender. So I'm I'm unfortunately I don't feel. Uh, what's it called? Mm-hmm. What's the word here? Educated mm-hmm. enough to answer that, oh, if okay. only because <laughs> I've only watched book one. Okay, um, okay. And so I'm just like, I feel like I should have watched the whole thing, and I should know the background of Avatar in order to, like, say whether or not it's an anime. Because that... I know that discourse can be, like, especially, like, <laughs> online can be, like, a like a minefield uh-huh. Uh-huh. and so like i intentionally avoid it because i don't feel like i well, would I'm like be... for the purposes of this this conversation for yeah. this podcast essentially um like what i would i would say it is um uh-huh. but it's almost like I that don't... at that point how do we define an anime yeah yeah I, I don't really know how you would define it per se but like i always viewed it as an anime like when i when i think about avatar i'm like yeah that that has the same feel and vibes as <laughs> any other anime that i i watch right like it, it it feels different than what i think about when i think about like 
American cartoons or Western cartoons, right? Mm. There's just like a whole, like we're telling this overarching story, like yeah. we're getting like deep into the characters and relationships and stuff like that. And that's something that is very different than what I'm used to when it comes to like Western cartoons that are more mm. like episodic, like usually comedies or something like that. That's not really going anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Um, so whenever anything kind of like tackles that, I always kind of view it through the lens of like, oh, this is very much an anime, mm -hmm. right? Um, that That's where I land on it. You heard it here, internet. Uh-huh. Avatar, Avatar is an anime. And this is it's why we anime. get a bunch of views so they can all just Come. tear Rob apart for his... <laughs> <laughs> Come at me. Give, me. give me the engagement. All right. I'll take those numbers. This is very strategic, guys. I did this on purpose. <laughs> Here's that's, worms, kid. Woo! That's, that's perfect in every way. I I love mm -hmm. that. No, that's that's super interesting. I I really should get to. I really should get to watching and finishing Avatar. I did really like book one, mm -hmm. especially when it went black and white and it was like blowing my mind animation wise. You know, with the with the moonfish stuff. Um, but I think I think I think I fell off of it because I was like I was either moving, or like. You know rocky life stuff so but um I'll, I'll, I'll pick that back up okay so we, we we've we've got our good our good sets of uh of four people mm -hmm. people people know who we are now and that's great um so I, i'm going to go a little bit into i guess like what what will be the format of this podcast going forward uh mm. as as mentioned as mentioned earlier we are book clubbing <laughs> the 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 hilarious term essentially <laughs> uh every episode so every episode I'll, pro I'll probably open up with something like uh you know what what, what have you been watching recently you know because because obviously we like anime enough that we're gonna watch things other than our book club stuff yeah. And uh, that'll be fun to explore because I'm I'm sure we're gonna be watching different things. <laughs> I know I am. I already know one anime that I'm watching that you two probably will not be watching. But um, oh. it's uh, it, you know that's like a that that'll be like a fun little starter for every episode. And I'm always excited to hear what new things are under y'all's belt, whether it be something old or maybe you're rewatching and you're gonna get like like Jenny said that new experience from the rewatching, you know more some new questions or new answers and then uh and then we'll hop into uh an anime that we all collectively we don't necessarily watch it together but we all by the next podcast have to watch you know however many episodes uh of this anime and then that will cover a block of time uh per podcast because you know we can go into the weeds of it did we like it did we not like it um what other anime have you watched of that kind? Is this the first anime of that kind that you watch? Because, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, infinite anime is about infinite different things. There might, <laughs> yep. There's no doubt we're going to run into things that we just are like, I had no idea they made an anime about mowing the lawn. You know, like stuff like that. Um, <laughs> the way Rob shook his head is like, where did he pull that out? I feel like he's I, I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, I bet you I will have that anime on deck by next recording. <laughs> if not anime, at least a light novel. I'll find it. <laughs> Incredible. Um, like, my uncle is a lawnmower in another world or some shit. I'll find it. And uh, so, with that being <laughs> said, I won't. Uh, I, I will have first pick. Uh, for the the anime that we will watch in between now and two weeks of our next episode, um, but I'll I'll save that uh, for the end of the episode. We're gonna play really quickly. I'm very curious about this. Uh, a, mm. a quick a quick little game. Uh, I like games. And so, whenever I I what I want to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do five five anime. Uh, for each of you, I'm going to say, I'm going to say the title of an anime, and I want you to tell me the first word that comes to your head. Okay. But I, and so I'm going to start with Rob. Oh, great. All right. Okay. So, just just 
No thoughts. I don't want you to take take time on this. I want the first word to come out of your head. All right. So, Attack on Titan. Giants. Uh. I shield twenty one. Football. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um. Land of the Lustrous. Gems. Uh. Overlord. Demons. Uh, Tact Opt Destiny. <laughs> Tactical Vests. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, Jenny. Here's you yours. Like two of those. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that last one. You never heard of Tact Opt Destiny? <laughs> I, th- I feel like Jenny would like Tact Opt Destiny. Um, oh, God. It's very music oriented. Mm. Um, couldn't tell from the title. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, let's go with Jenny. Ya boy, Kong Ming. What? <laughs> Hentai. <laughs> oh, this is getting good. <laughs> this is getting good. Tokyo Ghoul. Oh. Uh, uh, eyeball. Oh, that's a good one. Um, let's see. My Dress Up Darling. Oh, uh, endearing. <laughs> Aww! <laughs> um, Mob Psycho 100. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, that's two words. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh crap. A hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll put I'll put the I'll put the number one hundred percent. I'll count that as one word. <laughs> and um, blue period. Uh, exorcist. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> I, I, blue I, exorcist. I I, I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love I love that you segue to like just a different anime. <laughs> I couldn't even get, get a guess. I was like, a uh, girl has a period and it's blue. No, I can't use that word. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. That that is. These are the types of responses I was like expecting. Yeah, that's that's, that's so fun. Um, all right. Uh, shall we get to what our first anime is that we'll be watching, uh, and that we'll be discussing for the next episode? Um, yeah. That that anime is Blue Lock. Uh, Blue Ooh. Blue Lock is a it's a um, soccer anime. Um, all that I really know about it <clears throat> is that someone, it, I guess, developed a way to determine who Japanese or who Japan's greatest striker is going to be, and and it's through a process called Blue Lock, um, and. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess the plot of the show is figuring out who Japan's next striker for the World Cup is going to be. Um, it's the the Japanese uniforms on, on Japan's miracle run through the FIFA World Cup. If I'm not mistaken, their jerseys were inspired by Blue Lock. Uh, oh, that's cool. Which I think is like, I don't know, just one of the coolest things. Um, I haven't seen the anime myself. So I'm very excited to, I don't know, to, uh, I guess delve into it. Do, uh, do, do either of you two have a particular, like, fondness for sports anime? I do. Um, and it's not because, like, I'm, like, geared towards any specific sport, mm-hmm. but being a competitive person, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I play fighting games competitively, right? Yes. Like, I get into that headspace and I've relate to characters that are also very competitive so usually those stories like i find some way to relate to them in some way mm-hmm. right so like chihaya Fudu, for example was like a really really good one yeah um I, I was i haven't finished it yet but um i'm in the middle of watching diamond no ace right that's, oh, yeah. that's a really good baseball, baseball one and I don't, I don't like baseball at all <laughs> me either <laughs> uh but that that show is is fascinating mm-hmm. um they, they have some amazing characters and it's amazing arcs and just very very interesting stuff Mm -hmm. um so i have an affinity towards sports anime despite not being a sports person and uh Mm -hmm. blue lock is one that's like it's a it's everywhere around me 
like everywhere I look, someone is talking about blue lock or like I see images of blue lock and I'm like, why am I being surrounded by soccer balls? Like, what's happening? <laughs> Not like, all the balls uh, showing up. All the balls are showing up and I'm like, wait a minute, hold up. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm excited to check this out. Hell yeah. What about you, Jenny? Do you, do you have like a particular affinity to sports anime or um... anything like that? I can't say I do. I, so my first one was manga Prince of Tennis. Oh, <laughs> iconic! Uh, a, right, I didn't realize it was. One. I didn't realize it was going to become iconic. Right at that time, it was just being yeah. released in issues of Stone and Jump, and I was like, yeah. I like tennis. Yeah. You know, um, mm -hmm. I, that's why I played it when I was a kid. So it was like kind of relatable. I was like, tennis is cool now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, tennis is cool now. Because if it's in a manga, if it's in a manga, it's cool now, guys. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Blue Lock came out, and it was around the time of the World Cup. You know. Mm -hmm. was was um going on and so it's like there's a new interest for everybody so i think maybe that was kind of the intentional timing potentially mm -hmm. around it um but what i'd so i play soccer and i i'm oh, very yeah. competitive in soccer but it's actually kind of it was like my my inner thoughts were being realized as i started watching blue lock mm -hmm. and i was like oh i'm not the only one oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not special, no. Um, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> but it's it's very psychological. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's not what I expect when I watch um a, a sports anime. Um, so I don't really have a lot of experience in in them, but this isn't what I was expecting story-wise. Um kind of like <sighs> What's that one that you had me watching? The music one. Bochi? Bochi. Yeah, Bochi. <laughs> Shout out to Bochi. <laughs> Shout out to Bochi. <laughs> um, with Bochi, it was a little bit of psychology of music. And yeah, then same with uh, Your Ally in April, um, from the perspective of someone who usually plays alone, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. now you, you kind of do a similar thing in soccer, but it's how do you become a solo player in a team sport? Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Yeah, okay. I can definitely go into the psychology of it next time we we all chat about it. Um, but I'm excited, excited. For you guys to to get caught up, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be um it'll be the first season, which I think is twelve episodes long. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll mm -hmm. cover that block um essentially, and then uh, if we want to go into second season, I guess we'll talk about that. But um, for now, for the two weeks. We're you know we're 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 still we're still navigating this wonderful podcast minefield and and our yeah. own personal workloads getting a feel for it. So uh, I think I think a twelve episode first season is very safe, um, mm -hmm. and then we can just we can go from there. Um, all right, uh, let's 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 get to pl plugging away and 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 kick off our our uh, first episode. Uh, Zen, you got any? Uh, you got any social media you want to plug or anything like that? Sure. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Zenosuke, Z-N-O-S-U-K-E, -E, uh, where I am just a an art retweet bot. So if you just want to see all of the wonderful artwork from artists that I follow, you can just follow my account. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk about video games every once in a while. Um, and then you can also follow the, the JSP Gamescast, right, which is on all the podcast services that comes out. Uh, every Wednesday, um, which I will be recording after this podcast, so jump on another show, yay! Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you can follow that also on Twitter uh, at Jack Savage Base for any information on when the podcast goes up. Uh, mm -hmm. And then also shout outs to uh, Oni Koro, which is the sake brand from Bochi. Uh, it is really good. <laughs> incredible, incredible. Um, what about you, Jenny? Do you have any social media or any any projects or anything that you want to plug in? Um, sure. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, within this year, I'll be releasing an EP. So yeah, uh, that's I, sick. Gone, it's the first time here. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we've gone from playing a lot of covers to um, starting to get back into music writing. So I used to write music a lot when I was in high school. Um, and uh it turns out a lot of our bandmates also love that stuff so we're actually putting together full band pieces um here's my lovely bass right next to me so i'm a bassist for my band uh we officially came up with a real name too we had a working one but now we have aprons so it's official mm -hmm. it's uh, dish belly is our band name incredible um, dish belly all right <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh any any other projects or or just that one for now 
I'm happy with just that one for now. <laughs> All right, fantastic. <laughs> and then uh, for any of the goons that know me, uh, you can find me on Pinoy Grigio Twitch, where I will do more than just stream this podcast. I'll stream games, hopefully get the charity clashing again soon. Um, there's also the uh, JSB Anime Instagram now. Uh, JS, JSB Anime Twitter now. Uh, all uh, b- both of them will be in the in the when the stream is done uh, title card and then also the YouTube channel where you can catch the bots of anything like that so you can share it with your homies and uh, show them how smart we are uh, yeah <laughs> so um, yeah with that I dub the first JSB anime cast done uh everyone say bye bye everyone everyone bye. wave bye have a good rest of your sunday everyone enjoy a uh, hand egg <laughs> <laughs> bye it was fun Thank <laughs> you.